Hey y'all, it's Andrew Reed with Mossy Creek Mushrooms, and today I'm just going to really quickly show you all how to make grain spawn out of liquid culture. I think that this is a great method for bonus materials. I do not suggest that you rely on liquid culture as your primary means of generating spawn in your operation. I suggest that you either buy spawn from a reputable dealer or make it yourself using agar to master to grain spawn bag. That way you can fully capitalize on the sterility of the solid to solid transfer. Liquid culture tends to go great, but when it goes wrong, it goes really, really wrong. And when you're doing a commercial enterprise, you need reliability over the cheapness of liquid culture. However, like I said, liquid culture I think does great when you're trying to grow something weird. So today, we're doing something a little bit weird for us, which is Golden Enoki and Ivory Beach. I've grown both of these varieties before. They sell great to chefs, but they're not my normal bread and butter. I rely on my own spawn and sometimes purchase spawn from reputable dealers for my commercial operation. Liquid culture is very easy to do. Let's do that now. Emporium.com. You guys should check him out for any kind of liquid culture that you're going to get. I find that his liquid culture is typically very reliable and he is fast at getting it to you and he's got great customer service. I take my liquid culture, I spray it down with alcohol. Let's see if I can get the zoom to change. There we go. Make sure that my hands are clean, that my bags are clean. Take the needle, I'm gonna spray that package down with alcohol. A lot of people don't do this. I like to even get here inside the lip. Make sure that I spray all this. I, once I've got it sprayed down with alcohol and I really go crazy, I do not like to set it back down. I like to start off by opening the needle first, holding that towards the airstream, taking my hand and twisting off the cap on the liquid culture syringe. I then both spray both of those with alcohol as an added precaution. It's not always necessary. While this is still in the package, I take it and screw it on, throw away the paper, make sure that my hand is dry of alcohol. You do not want a lab fire. Go slow, make sure that you're safe. I take my lighter, pull this cap of the syringe off, drop it, you're not going to need that. Light the lighter. You can do this with a propane torch, an alcohol lamp, or a lighter. I like the simplicity of a propane torch or a lighter. I get the end red hot. Once I have that, I take this and I open my bag. 
without ever touching the very top seam. As you'll notice, I open it up from the sides. I then take my liquid culture. I'm going to use this whole syringe in this bag today. You do not normally need to do that. A small amount works. I want this stuff fast. I'm just playing with it. It is not something that is necessary, so I'm not trying to stretch anything out. Take the bag and I just spray the needle in. I always try to do this towards the back of the bag or the front, down the side, at least some of it, because then I can see as the mycelium is growing on the side. Once I get a nice solid block of mycelium, I will take that, bust that bag up, shake it around, spread that mycelium around, and then I have a fully colonized bag within a few days. Take my bag, never touching inside the bag, any folds that I need to work out, I do with my fingers on the outside of the bag. I take this and I fold it down towards the filter, the HEPA filter. I take my bag, lay it aside, put it into my sealer, close my sealer, let it do the rest of the work. I then take my syringe that I have used and go throw it over to the side. You didn't see that, but it's just to the side of the over there. The bag is done sealing. I have touched the camera monopod and now I'm having to fight with it to try to get it from falling over. One second. Because I've touched the monopod, I'm going to spray my hands back down with isopropyl to get everything clean. I do not like spraying isopropyl onto my hands unless I have gloves on. I do not like making skin contact with isopropyl. I think it's just fine for the most part, but I prefer ethanol like hand sanitizer for my hands or bare skin or my arms when I'm uh, doing that, uh, when I'm sanitizing my arms. But as far as my hands go right now, they're covered in gloves, I use isopropyl. Take the bag off, remove the tape, take my Sharpie, just use my code that I have for the bag, which for Golden Anoki is just GE, very simple. My lab notes and my paperwork, I will have my date, who did the bag, and uh, where I got the, the, the culture from. That bag is done, I will now take it and shelve it. And on to the next one. So that's it on the liquid culture. It's very simple. I mean, you just take sterilized grain bags, which you can do in a pressure cooker, and then you can just squirt LC in it. You can also buy bags that have self-healing injector ports in them. They're way more expensive. It's really only necessary if you don't have a HEPA filter. I have a HEPA filter. I buy the cheaper bags. I use my same spawn bags that I do solid to solid transfer on um, for my liquid culture. I, just by opening the bag like you saw, squirting the LC in the top. It's super simple. Liquid culture is a great way to get into the beginning of mushroom growing. If you're wanting any liquid culture to use, I highly suggest using liquid culture from Lenny Rockwell over at the MyceliumEmporium.com. I'll put that link down below. If you use code MOSSY, M-O-S-S-Y, you'll get 10% off all your future orders. So make sure you go there and use that and save some money. I really like the variety of mushrooms that Lenny's got on his website. And like I said, I use liquid culture usually for one-offs or strange things, which means that, that that's pretty much the perfect setup. I can go and select from a wide variety of species and strains and quickly use it. He's even got one of our Monster Greek Mushrooms originals over there called the Pathfinder Oyster. It is my absolute favorite oyster mushroom pop. Um, so I highly suggest, you know, if you want to get some liquid culture and just try a one-off weird thing, then go get the Pathfinder Oyster from Lenny. It's, it's beautiful. Hey y'all, it's Andrew Reed with Monster Creek Mushrooms and it's a few days later uh, from what you've been watching currently and I just wanted to show you what the liquid culture does once we've got it going. 
So here is a bag of liquid culture grain spawn that we've made up. You guys can see I messed Samantha's table up already. We're gonna fix that, but for now, it'll remain messed up. All right, the light on there. Let's see if you guys can see it. That glare is pretty bad. All that white growth on the top. mycelium that is growing off of the liquid culture I got from Lenny. So now, all I'm going to do, now that it's grown multiple grains deep and connected into a web, the way I speed this up is by taking this, breaking all of that up, shaking it up, we go that'll be completely grown in in about three or four days from now that's the kind of growth rate I get off of liquid culture again not my favorite way to grow mushrooms so again liquid culture is not my preferred way to grow mushrooms co uh, commercially when you start producing hundreds of pounds a week you really need reliability and consistency. I feel like liquid culture is great. Like it's amazing. It's amazingly fast and it's amazingly easy. And it's great until it's not. So do I suggest using liquid culture as a hobbyist? Absolutely. Do I suggest using liquid culture to get unusual things quickly? Absolutely. Uh, do I even suggest using it as uh, once-offs or anything like that? Yeah, abs absolutely. Anything that's bonus use liquid culture for. You can even use it commercially if you plan correctly. I did it for years. I found that I didn't like it because I was constantly managing the ups and downs of, you know, when it failed, it'd go really terribly. And because oftentimes I would get liquid culture that would grow in looking beautifully on grain. And it might even survive a couple of transfers. And then when it went into the really rich environment of the uh, master's mix, it would just explode with contamination. Uh, I think it just had mushroom diabetes from all the sugar water, and then the sugar in the grain, and then the sugar in more grain transfers, and over and over and over again. However, I think that it's not all bad. I love liquid culture for many things, and I use it regularly myself. Like I said, Typically for weird stuff. I know lots of people who grow oyster mushrooms who use liquid culture to generate grain spawn. They always generate more than they need, and then they just keep generating more and more uh, grain spawn and fruiting blocks than they need. And I think that that's great. Excuse me. Uh, I just prefer solid to solid transfers with easy lines of visibility for seeing contamination. And that is my method. If you do something different, I would love to hear about it. Please leave that in the comments down below. Let me know where you disagree with me. If you agree with me, great. I particularly love hearing people disagree with me, rip my arguments apart, and make me a better grower for it. So, please, absolutely, guys, leave your comments down below. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up button. Please subscribe to our channel for more mushroom growing videos. And, uh, as always, keep spawning culture, y'all.